like to call, uh, call this meeting to order. Um, could everybody please stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance with me, please? Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. And to the republic, and to the republic for which republic it stands, stands. one nation, nation, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty for all. justice for all. Thank you. Are there any changes to the agenda tonight? There are no changes to the agenda, but prior to adoption of the consent calendar, uh, Sean Brewer just wants to make a clarification on one of the items. Okay. All right. Do we have a uh, council's approval for the agenda? I'll motion. Adam. Second. Okay, it was approved and seconded. Roll call, please. Councilman Atkinson? Aye. Councilman Singleton? Aye. Councilwoman Stoltz? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Ramsey? Aye. Mayor Lander? Okay, we'll go to item two, awards, presentations, appointments, and proclamations. We have one, give me love shelter update report. Should I go to Marissa? No, I believe I believe they were calling in. Oh, okay. Okay, hold on just for a second. We'll need to know their telephone number. I think George is raising his hand. Thank you, Sean. George, was that you? Can you speak now? Yes, can everybody hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Hello, Honorable Mayor and members of council. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, we just, I'm sorry, go ahead. you're okay go ahead okay sorry about that um so we wanted to do a report tonight and give you guys an update um on what the shelter's been doing q1 q2 i don't know if you guys hear that fuzzy noise but i'm getting some really bad feedback yeah i think people need to uh, mute their microphones um sorry i will push on here and, and try to get through this pretty quickly um I just wanted to give you guys an update. Um, we had an intake, uh, Q1, Q2, um, of a total of 328 animals. We had 163 dogs come through the shelter, um, which 37 were returned to owners, 17 were adopted, and 109 went to rescue. We had 160 feline cats come through. Um, 38 are in foster at this time, 31 have been adopted, and 61 have went to rescue. Uh, we had one rabbit that was adopted and four birds that went to rescue. So we had a total intake, Q1, Q2 totals of 328 animals. Um, we boarded seven animals during the recent fires that devastated our area um, for residents that uh, needed help with that, so that was a pleasure to be able to do for the community. Um, the spay neuter program that we had going and we were in full force, uh, kind of slowed down for obvious reasons. Um, the pandemic um, certainly brought us to a screeching halt. Um, there were, um, sorry, losing my notes here. We had, um, 11 shelter dogs, what is that? I'm sorry, excuse me, is that a shelter dog, shelter mm -hmm. cat? Oh, I'm sorry, we have in the shelter right now, 11 dogs. Oh, shelter dogs, 11 fixed spay neutered, 31 cats spayed or neutered, and resident dogs, two spayed and neutered, and 29 cats. 
So that number went way down. If you remember the first time we came in and did a report, those numbers were pushing close to 100 that we were doing for the community. So hopefully we get through this pandemic and we can get back to normal and start doing our thing. Um, we had 11 dogs come in and get uh, rabies vaccinations, 18 cats rabies vaccinations for a total of 29. And um, if you guys remember, we talked about um, the Avenel uh, State Prison was going to donate some space for us, and we were going to set up some kennels so that we could do more intake. That obviously got put on hold, um, so we're not sure when that's going to go again. So we need space. We need um, more space so we can intake more animals. There's still a lot out there that we could tend to. Um, so I need to uh, probably come in, talk to Sean a little bit and see about some of these buildings outside of town that these people are letting sit. We could definitely use some space. Um, we're preparing to, uh, to build some new cat kennels to prevent the spread of infection in the, um, in the shelter and provide cats more room to, to roam around. Um, due to kitten season, season being at full um, go right now, it's been a little bit crazy, um, which kind of leads me into um, our PetSmart contract that we have that was full force for obvious reasons. The pandemic also slowed that down. So that's been a real chore to try to keep up with the, um, the amount of kittens that are coming through the shelter. Um, we have fosters that are fostering many, many of the kittens that are coming through. Um, the pandemic didn't slow the spread of the, the kitten season. So um, that's been a little bit rough to keep up with. And we are uh, thankful for the, the fosters that we have right now that are helping us out. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about feral cats in town. I know I've heard um, some people asking, what can we do about feral cats being dropped off, uh, programs that are available, so on and so forth. Um, programs have not been able to move forward, obviously, because of COVID and the spay-neuter issues, but um, TNR programs are what we're leaning towards. They work. Um, we kind of followed the city of Isaiah, their TNR program. TNR is trap, neuter, and release. Release is what catches the attention of most people because you're bringing back a spayed or neutered animal to the location where you picked it up from. Um, a lot of people don't understand the TNR program um, unless you really take the time to study it, look at it, and see how it works. It is one of the, the most effective ways to control the population of, of cats. So I'm not gonna go too much into that. We wanna come back to the city with a presentation at some point about the TNR program. So we will, um, we will address that more as we go. Um, I just wanna say that um, you know, the community whole in part there's areas of the town that have more feral cats than others. There's businesses that have feral cats. And, you know, a lot of people got to step up to the responsibility. Um, if you feed feral cats, if you have given permission to feed feral cats, if you house feral cats, if you've given permission to house feral cats, then those cats are yours. Um, if the drop-off is a problem with people dropping off feral cats, it's illegal. Use your cameras, get some license plate numbers, report it to the PD so that they can act and do something about it as well. Um, the amount of cats that we're removing from, uh, for example, the car wash area, uh, the thrift shop, Ace Hardware, um, 68 kittens just in the last uh, couple months from that area. And uh, you know we have to tend to those, so we got to find fosters for those. We got to get them spayed, neutered. We got to get them out to PetSmart, um, which those places are closed down right now. So uh, housing those becomes an issue. 
So we need fosters. We need you guys to call in and uh, step up to the plate and take some of these kittens. Um, we are definitely trying to um, to make more of an impact. Um, I think we the progress is obvious in the numbers that we're making a, a dent, but we need to make a bigger dent. Uh, so we need space. We need programs. We need people. Um, Kind of moving on from that, I'd like to talk about our volunteers who are just absolutely amazing. Of course, I give credit to my wife, Lori, and my daughter, Alexis, for keeping the wheels spinning on this whole uh, program, but we have some outstanding volunteers. Um, I'd like to mention, if you don't mind, uh, David Carter, who comes in and does our morning cleaning and morning feeding, you're amazing. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, Sam Rome, Sky Lamore, Jaden Palmer, Gabrielle, I'm sorry, I don't know your last name, but you guys all come in and do a fantastic job. And without you guys, um, it would be very difficult. Um, we have uh, Mark and Sharon RC who started a walking program and an exercise program for the dogs. And I'm gonna tell you, since they started, they have been there every single day and they have brought on um, Michelle uh, Vasquez and her husband, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, um, Harold Weist, Barbara Weist, Sky Lamore. They come in and exercise, exercise these dogs, get them out of their kennels, um, get them out for the public to see. Uh, just amazing people. Um, we have Fosters, Mallory, Diane Roach, JR, uh, Keith and Morin Morden. Mark and Sharon R.C., Nancy Birdwell, Alexis, Valerie, and Baylor, Balin, <clears throat> and Darlene Kemper. Um, without you guys, we could not move forward in what we do. Um, sorry, I know this is getting long-winded, but I want to make sure I I mention everybody. Also, I want to I want to give thanks to got some people listening tonight, so I want to make sure I get all these. I'm sorry. Uh, Valley Oak SPCA, uh, West South or West Coast Humane out of Oregon, Oregon, the Kirkland Foundation, Woods Humane, Paul Works for the Sake of Dogs, Fresno Humane, Just a Girl Moving Dogs, Rescue Ranch, Cats by the Tracks, Pet Smart, of course, and Mead Canine, and Girl's Best Friend, and who am I? And South Coast Humane. Um, Without these people, these people are so amazing. They take our animals from Kalinga, they, they bring them in, they shelter them, they get them out to fosters and they find forever homes for them and they do an absolute amazing job. So I wanted to make sure that I got to mention them tonight. Um, the, oh yeah, I also wanted to mention before I forget, um, I wanna thank, number one, I wanna thank the people who are concerned about the animals and have called in and have sent some emails concerned about the um, the cooling in the shelter. Um, I want to thank number one the city for stepping up and uh, getting us the porticles that we um, asked for. Um, it, it wasn't a, a day or two that uh, that went by and we had them. Um, I want everybody to know that the animals in our shelter are very comfortable. We keep the temperature between seventy and 76 degrees with porticles and industrial fans. We've been doing that for years at our Monterey County facility and it works and being a nonprofit, a big electric bill wouldn't work for us. Um, so a big thanks to the city manager, the chief of police, uh, Mr. Blevins. Um, thank you guys for, uh, for stepping up and taking care of us in that manner. We appreciate it. And I do appreciate all the people who have called with the concern um, about the heat but uh, we do have it under control. And, you know, I don't, I don't want anybody to forget that, that we are open one to four. You guys can come in and see the animals and see what we're talking about. So with that said, um, I think I pretty much babbled enough. Any questions? Okay. Uh, George, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that. And we want to thank you and all your volunteers for everything you've been doing that the shelter sounds like it's working great and really we haven't I haven't seen that many dogs out 
just roaming around either. So I know you guys are doing something good. So I just want to thank you guys again. Uh, Council, do you have any questions that you'd like to have George answer? Ron, this is, yet? sorry, ahead, this I'm is sorry. Marissa. Um, I just wanted to say that I was there at the shelter. I don't remember if it was yesterday or the day before, honestly, but um, the animals were very happy and were well taken care of. Uh, they were cleaning the kitten cages and they were out roaming around and, you know, wanting to be um, picked up and pet. They were very friendly and seemed very happy. It was very cool in there. I had taken our building officials thermal gun uh, to check the temperature myself. And um, I would say it was about 76 degrees in there when I was there. It could have been cooler, but it was definitely cooler than what my office is. Um, and also, I just wanted to ask George for people that are listening, if they want to volunteer, what's your process or how do they contact you to inquire about volunteering? Yeah, absolutely, Marissa. First of all, thank you very much. Um, I'm glad you went to the, the shelter. Um, we have applications that are at the shelter and anybody can come by and grab an application, fill that out and we go through it. And that's how you volunteer for, um, or that's how you become a volunteer. Also the same process for adoption um, and fostering. We have applications that you need to come in and fill out. Um, you can also go on Facebook and pull us up under Gimme Love Animal Shelter and our website Gimme Love Animal Shelter dot com um, has an application at the bottom of the page that you can fill out. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, thank you, George. Was there any other questions from any other council or anybody in our uh, uh, Zoom audience? Okay, not seeing any. Uh, George, I want to thank you again. Thank you guys very much. We'll see you in a month or so. Okay, thank you, George. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, now we're going to go to number three, citizens comments. This section of the agenda allows members of the public to address the city council <clears throat> on any item within the jurisdiction of the council. Members of the public, when recognized by the mayor, should come forward to the lectern, identify themselves, and use, their, use the microphone. Comments are normally limited to three minutes in accordance with state open meeting laws. No action may be taken by the council this evening and all items will be referred to staff uh, for a follow-up and a report. Uh, do we have any? Yes, we have two written comments. And then um, City Manager Marissa Trejo will, will read one as well. Um, the first one is from Harold and... I'm sorry, I don't want to butcher somebody's name. Um, Barry? Bear... Barry Barrel, Barry Williams, um, Williams, and they um, are referring to the the state withholds virus money from defiant cities Atwater and Colinga. Newsom has blocked nearly sixty five thousand from Atwater in Merced County and more than thirty five thousand from Colinga in Fresno County. California is a mosaic. People have heard the siren call and followed it to California ever since before the state joined the union in 1850. California offered solace, employment, and recreation to all who entered her border. The state is too diverse to be governed from afar. Local authorities must be given latitude to explain the problem to their residents and design details needed to flatten COVID-19 curves while allowing businesses to meet residents' needs. During the 1960s, residents from Atwater attended Monterey Peninsula College with me because Atwater offered no community college within commuter range. Colinga has provided a safe east to west route between the I-5 freeway and Highway 101 and Highway 1 for decades. Please trust local authorities to manage the lives of people who live under their jurisdiction. Uh, the second written comment is from 
can't read the first name. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Dennis and Jeanette Watt. Um, honorable Mayor and Council Members, we wish to express our concern about the Council action on your response to the coronavirus pandemic. This is a national and state public health issue which requires collective sacrifice and our city should respect and abide with state guidance on this matter. We request your con you consider your position and comply with state guidance. We are senior citizens with pre-existing health conditions. We are concerned about the health of our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, all of whom reside in Kalinga. We are equally concerned about everyone in our community, state, and nation. We recognize the struggle of local businesses and would offer the following. Number one, distribute all current and future funding from the CARES Act to our local businesses. Number two, consider freezing collection of city business license fees for all businesses. Number three, in lieu of incurring future legal fees and litigation against the state, couple these funds with the CARES funding for local businesses. Number four, Explore ways to increase purchases of goods and services with our local businesses. And they've just um, follow up by saying they've asked the comment be read during citizens' comments at tonight's meeting. And that's all I have. Um, Marissa? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So the comment I have is from Glenn Mitchell. Kalinga Community Foundation Board President. Good evening, Council. Neither the SPCA nor the NRA makes ordinances. They lobby special interests. The Council makes the ordinances. If a city contractor lobbies you during a presentation, the public good and the business interest are conflicted. As an example, trap neuter return is an option. Advocating it is a lobby. Evidence is strong that mammals, cats, and dogs in particular can vector COVID to their species and ours. Raccoons, skunk, and kit fox all eat pet food and are mammals that cross into the city. Protect the interests of the community at large and the business community as you have pledged. Address the animal control ordinance spoken to on August 6, 2020. Regards, Glenn Mitchell, Kalinga Community Foundation Board President. And that is all I have. Okay. Was there anybody in the audience, in our speaking audience? Yes, I have one person, Andrea Rosas, who's asked to speak. Andrea, are you there? Andrea, you should be able to speak Hello? now. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, so, Mayor, Council Members, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name's Andrea Rosas. Um, I'm running for City Council District 2. Super excited. Um, I'm fairly young. I have a lot of great ideas and um, actually listening to people talking about the businesses and stuff like that. I, I have some ideas about that. I'm trying to help my community out even before being on council. Um, I hope to speak to everyone, make a good impression and just do what I do, what I've always been doing for a long time now, which is help uh, do events and promote community, stuff like that. Um, and I do wanna say a good job to the um, animal shelter. I didn't know how much you guys actually did and it was amazing to hear all the progress you guys have made and even keeping things alive and going through um, the COVID times. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to all the firemen out there who are working hard to keep us all safe and Kalinga PD who had a really rough morning from what I read on Facebook this morning. Good job to you guys all. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you guys. Well, thank you very much, Rosa. Okay. Uh, um, the next thing I just want to do, I want to uh, do a moment of silence for the firefighter that was, I mean, the fireman that was uh, killed in the helicopter crash and uh, helping protect our city. I'd like just a, a moment of silence for him um, and his family. So starting right now, thank you.
Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, I want everybody to keep, oh, we have, we have one more person? Yes. Okay, we have one more person that would like to bring up something. Roger Wilson, you should be able to go ahead and speak. Thank you, and good evening, Mayor and City Council. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Great, thank you. I'm Roger Wilson, and I am the uh, one of the lawyers, I should say, for the Kalinga Police Officers Association. I know that your closed session tonight will uh, be a discussion about the uh, Police Officers Association. Just wanted to introduce myself. I wanted to also say thank you to Marissa for basically bringing me up to speed on the, the history of the negotiations between the city and the association. The city, excuse me, the union has proposed some modest uh, items for your consideration. And I understand that there is pretty widespread support for the police officers of Kalinga. And I just look forward to working with you and also Mario, I know Mario. And I hope that we can reach a solution rather quickly. So just wanted to introduce myself and say thank you. Thank you very much, Roger. Is there anybody else? No. Okay. With that, we'll go to the consent calendar. We have 12 items on the consent calendar. Number one is approval of minutes of July 29th, 2020, a special mm -hmm. meeting. Approved minutes, August 6, 2020. Number three, adopt resolution 3967, approving the second amendment to the Police Department Dispatch Services Agreement between the City of Colinga and the City of Parlier. Number four, authorize Police Department to use the SLES SEF funding to conduct an evidence audit. Number five, authorize Public Works to purchase solar lighting for, from uh, Solar One for the wastewater plant and uh, Jane Avenue lift station. Number six, direct city manager to send letters to Congressman Cox expressing support for the 500 million in direct and flexible federal assistance to local government. Number seven, introduce and waive the first reading of ordinance number 843, amending the ordinance related to sidewalks, curbs, and gutters. Number eight, we report the sale of surplus fire department equipment and authorize to allocate funds. Number nine, authorize municipal advisory service agreement between the city of Kalinga and Wolf Hansen and Company. Number 10, notice of completion of, for the Gale Avenue improvement. Number 11, notice the completion for the medium island uh, landscaping product. And number 12, public works and utilities monthly report for July 2020. Is there any item anybody would like to pull? Adam wants to pull number 11, please. Number 11, okay. Tanya wants to pull number eight. Okay. Is that all? Okay. And then Mayor Pro Tem, there was a statement that Sean wanted to make, remember, that was clarification oh, on yeah. one of the items before adoption. And which which item do you with that? Do you know? Ron, that was uh, number oh hold on a second, number five. Number five? Okay. Would you like me to make that now and add that before we get into the questions? Yeah, go ahead, Sean. Sure. Um, number five is uh, the purchase of some solar lighting for the uh, wastewater treatment plant where we are doing some improvements from a safety standpoint, safety and security and some automation improvements. However, we, uh, the, the lead time on the solar lighting is about 16 weeks. So we went ahead and got quotes and we are looking to purchase those lights. Uh, the reason for uh, changing a little bit of number five has to do with the, the staff report identifies that the city will be um, self-performing the installation. However, uh, due to uh, the public cost accounting uh, rules and regulations, uh, installation and the materials costs have to be considered when looking at the full project scope. 
And in that case, the city will have to look at informally bidding the installation. Um, and then once the informal bids come back, the staff will be able to analyze um, within that time frame whether or not the city can perform at a lesser amount. Um, but that will be once we get all of our all of our information in line in terms of personnel costs, our material costs, and operational costs um, for equipment that may be used for that. So at this time, that item will be strictly just for the purchase of the lights, and then we will probably be back with the council in terms of whether the city will self-perform or uh, informal. And in, once an informal bid has been prepared, and that will happen within probably the next 16 weeks while we're waiting for those lights to come in. Okay, thank you very much, Sean. Any uh, questions to Sean about this? Okay, we'll go to number eight, Tanya. Yes, I wanna say good job to the new fire chief for selling um, some surplus. And my only question actually is, I'm curious as to who is um, making your table and chairs? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes, go ahead. Okay, uh, so uh, yeah, to answer your question, my furniture quotes are attached and the very last page is the table and chairs and it's gonna be done by a Mr. Robert Griffin. One of the guys here at the station um, asked, uh, asked around the community of who is a good woodworker and he was recommended, so he was chosen. Got it, thank you. I did not see that and I even read your report. <laughs> no worries. Okay, that all, would that be all, Tanya? Yeah, that's it, thanks. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, anybody else have any questions on number eight while we have it pulled? Okay, now we go to Adam, number 11, Adam. Okay, uh, Sean, on, on this one, if we look it down at number five, it says North Joaquin Street, uh, uh, Washington Street. By the way, this has to do with medians. There is no median there. However, there is a median at. Um... Oh, Adam, that was that was a last minute change. That right there is the area where the two palm trees are with the grass. Yes. We found out after we had actually proposed to do that median that there was someone had donated the palm trees and kind of how the median was decorated. So we didn't want to leave that alone for the time being. If in the future we decide to come back and do some improvements there, but we we went to want to leave that alone since it was uh, we found out that there was type of some type of donation or contribution in the past related to that particular location. Okay, we can't throw the rocks down in the gravel or whatever it is. We could if the council would like to do that. We probably probably could. I mean, we could probably even we might be able to even do it. I mean, if, I think we even have some leftover material where we might be able to take that grass out and put that in there. The problem is, is that we don't have any drip, any um, irrigation directly to the palm trees um, because they're all spray irrigation because it was grass. So if we cut off the irrigation, we would have to redo it. And the goal of the medium project was not to have to do any additional uh, running of irrigation lines. because That's where our costs really get inflated, but we may be able to look at that as just a, as a maintenance, we can run a couple bufflers to those palm trees um, and then eventually change that. But we hadn't, those improvements hadn't been done prior to construction. Okay, I just want to check. I'll come in sometime next week and, and talk about it. No problem. Okay, well, thank you. Anybody else have any questions on uh, number 11? Okay, um, could I have a motion for the consent calendar? I don't make the motion. Right. I'll second. Great. Okay, the motion's been um, raised and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Atkinson? Aye. Councilman Singleton? Aye. Councilwoman Stoltz? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Ramsey? I also vote aye. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we'll go to item number six, ordinance presentations and discussion and potential action items. We have none. Announcements, city manager announcements. Yes, I just wanted to let everyone know that on Monday, uh, we hope to roll out a uh, phase one water conservation um, to get everyone to adjust their outside watering to three days a week for a while. 
um, maybe just the next couple of weeks as we have this high heat going on um, and the rolling outages through PG&E. We just want to be as prepared as we can be. So we'll be putting uh, some information out to the public on Monday asking for uh, voluntary compliance to just water outside three days a week. Okay. Is that all we, you have today? Yeah, the only other thing is I wanted to thank staff. We had City Beautification Week this week. Um, it followed the um, community cleanup event that was held on Saturday. And so we had all departments helping with code enforcement this week. And we still have some notices to go out, but we were able to cover the four quadrants of the city. And um, it took a lot of time and effort from every department. And so I just want to thank staff for that and also thank the community for helping us um, make the city look nice. Well, thank you very much. I have one question for you. Um, were you, were we able to uh, get the power back on at the water plant today? I've been out of town, uh, so I haven't been able to look at my uh, emails and stuff today. So I was just wondering about the water plant. Yes, so the power is back on at the water plant. Uh, we put a notice on the city's Facebook page asking everyone if they would hold off on um, outside watering until about noon tomorrow just to allow the water plant to catch up on that time that was lost while the plant was down. Um, but we do have power there now. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay, uh, council members announcements, anybody? I have one. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I, I just wanna give a big thanks and shout out to Mid Valley Disposal and all of their employees for running a flawless dump day, free dump day for the community. Um, sometimes I don't think we give them a, the recognition that they deserve. So I just want to, I hope they, someone is hearing this and can pass that along to them. Thanks to Mid Valley. Okay. And Tanya, I think that could come from the whole council too. I think they are doing us a good job. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, I'm taking the place of the mayor today and I have no announcements and he didn't give me any. So um, we'll go to future agenda items. Anyone? I have one that I like to bring up. I brought it up a couple of years ago, but it, it didn't go anywhere. And I think in the, the year 2020, I think we need this real bad. I'm not a real religious guy, but um, I, I want to see if we can put in God we trust um, inside our council chambers and I can get some more information. I, uh, the city of Bakersfield did it and there's a, a lot of other towns here in the valley that have been doing it too. And I'll get everybody some information and bring it for you, but I, I'd like to see if we could bring that again back to Colinda. I've got okay. it noted, thank you. Okay, thank you. And with that, we have a closed session, Conference with Labor Negotiations, Government Code 54957.6, City Negotiators, City Manager Marissa Trejo, City Attorney Mario Zamora, Employee Organization, the Colinda Police Officers Association. I'd like to thank everybody on uh, their phones tonight and their computers and uh, thank you for being part of the city. Um, and right there, I'll uh, close the council hearing right now. Thank you.